Hey guys, I'm meteorologist Chris Tomer. Let's talk some mountain weather. We had our uh, snowstorm roll through Colorado and now the skies are starting to clear here. But take a look at uh, Loveland Ski Area, now open, now skiing. It was probably a powder morning up there. They're reporting nine inches of new snow up there. You can see the runoff of uh, the Chet's Dream Lift. A lot of the resorts here in Colorado ended up with like six to 12 inches of snow out of storm number one. And there are two other storms lined up that will basically ride a powerful jet in and at times flirt with being an atmospheric river with really good orographics. And that's one of the key things I'm looking at um, with, this, with this setup. I wrote about it this morning on my blog. Let me show you first before we get to that, the setup here. And this is what I'm talking about. Let me just draw on a few different features. So first of all, there goes storm number one, which is the one responsible for really setting up this entire pattern. Then you've got another large storm there and another big low behind it. So this is number one. This would be storm number two. This would be number three and the flow is powerful. You've got the jet running basically like this. And in there, and I'm going to draw this in green. This, I mean, this is going to be at times a powerful channel of atmospheric river potential. And what it will do is flow and just push all this moisture at a really good angle relative to the Cascades, the high volcanoes, and then eventually as the flow shifts south into the Sierra. Um, and at times also you're going to get waves of precip blown into the interior uh, rocky. So I really like what I'm seeing out of storm number two and storm number three. I wrote about a snowy two-storm combo. This is ChrisTomer.com. Please subscribe if you haven't. You'll get notified in your email box whenever there's a new post. And I do these almost every single day during ski season. Talk a lot about mountain weather in general. They're my, uh, what I call Tomer's Take. I do just bullet points. You can see the setup, the atmospheric river. Um, and then I go into the pattern between 11.4 and 11.10, 11.11. I've got this in high res here, so I'm gonna switch over to this. But this is the jet pattern on 11.7. And right away when I see this, big trough developing, dip in the jet, and it's further west of California. Whereas storm number one really wasn't, and the, the winds were not optimal. The ore graphics were less than favorable. The, this is going to be different. Um, and you're getting nailed in the Pacific Northwest now, but all of that moisture feed drops south, and you can see it hitting the Sierra at a right angle, orthogonally, uh, or, orthogonal. And this is going to be the kind of ore graphics that we always hope for when we talk about big snows in the Sierra. So that's 11.7, and this is 11.8. And the, uh, the dip continues, the buckling of the jet. Um, and you've got, and, and this is the translation part where the jet now is absolutely smacking into the, into the, uh, the Wasatch and also into Bryan Head in southern Utah at a more favorable angle through the atmosphere. And then uh, it's also nailing the, and, and even in the 11.7 period, but even in the 11.8, it's nailing the Tetons. So, you know, this is going to be a good snowy period. There's no question across the west, the Intermountain West. Um, right now it's the Pacific Northwest. Um, so I'm going to switch back to the uh, the blog here and we'll move into the next phase of this and that's going to be um, and here's the IVT plume forecast. So integrated water vapor transport. When we look at atmospheric river set setups we usually check to see you know how much water vapor we're actually transporting at a perfect angle. And this is, this is the sense, 11, 5, 6, and 7, which is just what I was showing you. That moisture comes out of the Pacific Northwest, and at times it's brief, it's weak, and at, sometimes it could be low to, uh, on the low end moderate, but this is what we need. This is an indicator that we're, we're really going to see a nice little setup. Let's look at timing here. So forecast timing. All right, future radar, satellite. I'll slide this into the future here Saturday at 6. Here comes storm number 2 dropping down. And there's Sunday at 6. It's, get re it's reinforced Monday in the morning. And look at that circulation. Tuesday, Wednesday at 6, Wednesday night. So the, the third impulse drops in behind the second. And you've got a prolonged period of heavy snow with good aura graphics from the Sierra into Utah, into the Tetons, uh, into parts of Idaho and western Montana. Um, the kind of thing that we just really like to see. Um, so let's move into um, the, uh, the snow forecast phase of this. 
So uh, just to wrap up today and tomorrow, 11-4, 11-5, total snow between that period, uh, it's going to be big in some places. Um, so into Idaho, western Montana, into the Tetons, you've got some nice accumulations on the way, even up at a Banff and Sunshine and Kicking Horse, Red Mountain and Fernie Baker. You've got a little bit of snow on the way up there. Uh, and then that flow shifts south. Here's the heart of the forecast, and I'll spend a little bit of time on this. So this is 11.6 through 11.11. 11. Um, the Sierra, if this comes together and there, there's an impulse uh, or an a brief atmospheric river, uh, high, weak to low, moderate, then you get this two to three to four foot sort of swath from Shasta to Heavenly, Kirkwood, um, all the way down to Mammoth. It, on this map, I show Mammoth having the biggest total, but that could shift back towards towards Tahoe. Just depends on that you have to time the precip packets with some of the OR graphics, so um, that's why this forecast may shift in time. But then you get all that moisture and the good jet support into the uh, into Utah. And though the Wasatch, we're talking potentially in some places two to three feet. Brian Head probably gets 16 or so. It's possible in Colorado there's some blow off across the western slope. I'm going to probably four to eight out there, but uh, that part of the forecast. Um, may continue to develop as well. So that's not set in stone. Um, I think we're looking at probably one to two feet. Well, uh, in here, let me just show you. I'm going to go back to 11, 4, 11, 5. Notice I'm forecasting 19 inches here across the Tetons between the 4th and the 5th. And then I'm adding another 16 to 22 to that between the 6th and the 11th. So, I mean, that's like a three-footer. That's a three-footer. Um, when you run 11, 4 to 11, 11 grand total, I mean, that's a three footer. Um, and it's, you know, you're looking at potentially three feet across the little Cottonwood Canyon. And, you know, maybe high uh, two to low three foot range on Big Cottonwood Canyon. So uh, this is this is good stuff. I really like it so far. Um, I'll keep an eye on it all week. We'll see where the data shifts and um, take it from there. Thank you for tuning in here. Take care.